So the best thing to do is try to scoop them upwards. Oh my god. All right, let's talk about handling some tokes. Handling toke geckos, it's every hobbyist dream. Taking these animals that are very defensive, you know, charging, gaping, darting away to something that you can actually hold in your hands. However, learning how to handle toke geckos is not as easy as simply getting into the enclosure and picking it up. A lot goes into it and a lot of time is involved when trying to tame down these geckos. Today I thought I'd make a video talking about, you know, all the things I do in order to tame down these geckos and handle them while also giving some, uh, some warnings and forethought before you do attempt to handle your toke. So let's sit back, relax, and talk about handling toke geckos. So before we go ahead and start handling these geckos, I want to talk to you guys about a few things, a couple disclaimers, and then uh, some things I think you guys should know before you actually attempt holding geckos. So the first thing I think you should realize before you start trying to handle your toke is really ask yourself, you know, why do you want to hold your toke? Is this for just those critical circumstances where, say, you need to make a vet appointment, move stuff out of the enclosure, cleaning, you want to make it a little easier, or is this more of something where you just want the experience? You know, you, you see people in the Facebook groups posting pictures of them holding their tokes and you want to hold yours. Honestly, as a disclaimer, I really don't think you should hold toke geckos that much, or even at all. I mean, these guys make beautiful display animals just in themselves. I really don't see this huge wave of need of these newcomers coming in with their toke geckos and then immediately asking, you know, how do I tame my toke gecko down? How do I handle, you know, what do I do for it? At the end of the day, it's an unnecessary stressor. Now, I understand, you know, if you need to be a book avoid a vet appointment, needing to get in there, you know, moving them to a bigger enclosure, trying to clean the enclosure, and he's in the way. I would want to something, you know, try to calm him down a little bit and get him a little more trustworthy with you, or even having a little more handleability on actually the knowledge and how to handle these tokes instead of just going in blind. But I did decide to finally make this video just because of the fact that I have seen a very large increase in people, you know, wanting to learn, you know, how do you tame these geckos? How do you hold them? I want to hold my gecko. And then people posting uh, videos on Facebook groups of them holding them and just doing it the incorrect way, causing so much unnecessary stress and just freaking the animal out that I'm like, okay, you know what? If you guys want to at least know, let, let someone teach you right instead of just holding the animal like this. I mean, gee. <laughs> It's not, don't do that. Okay, with all that out of the way and being said, let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is handling toke geckos. Showing you guys a couple of different um, methods, styles, whatever you want to call it, on different ways you can do it. Uh, if you want to just get in there quick and easy, um, or if you're trying, you know, gain that trust, like I say, you want to take it to the next level and actually attempt holding the gecko, some stuff that is the correct way of doing it, and then I'll go over stuff that you should not be doing. So I'll just be showing some different methods. I'll be showing how to, if you have some more of a uh, grumpy guy that really you just need to move in one enclosure to the other, I'll be showing how to properly and safely uh, pin the animal so that you, you can stay as safe as you can and restricts the animal from having any injuries like flailing around and hurting himself or turning around and biting you. And I'll be showing some different ways I do with the different tokes I have. Like, of course, I have some large male imported toke geckos, and then I have some captive bred subadults. I treat them a little bit different in the style that I do because getting bit by a, a subadult little gecko really is not that bad, barely breaks the skin, whereas being bit by a large imported male, uh, of course, as you can see from my friend Denise right here, does not end well. I guess I'll add one more disclaimer here because I did kind of mess up on that. Uh, it does not matter if your animal is an import or a captive red. Training them is all the same. Every animal is different and requires uh, different approaches depending on what the personality of the animal is. Uh, like I just showed this picture, I'll show it one more time. That came from a captive bred male, uh, not an import. So it just goes to show you that, you know, you really have to rely and read the gecko's body language, you know, their personality and how they're doing versus just thinking, oh, you know, this isn't an import, it's a captive red. I can just grab this animal and use a crack bread it's not gonna uh, not gonna buy me because that's not the case they can inflict some serious damage no matter how many generations of captive bread they are but all right all right with all of that out of the way all of the disclaimers and extra info that i've said let's get out of this chair and over to the tokes where i can show you some handling all right so over here by the toke bins now uh real quick before we get started just a couple things to go over uh first we're going to be talking with the imported big old male this is usually just for the people that have you know wild caught animals uh things like that it's going to be i'm going to do a different uh, approach to him than i would say a captive bred smaller individual and just two other things real quick um you're probably going to get bit your first time trying my first time doing at this i had a lot of them uh try to escape dart bite me it's just one of those things that happen uh number two where some gloves these guys can pack a punch i know there's gonna be some dudes on facebook that are gonna be like oh my god you need to be a man and not wear gloves grubs are for pussies blah 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 wear some gloves man i would rather deal with that on facebook than get an injury 
are going to heed my advice of wearing gloves, I recommend doing something a little more lightweight. Not that's going to be super thin where they're just going to tear right through it, but not something like uh, one of those welding gloves. That was the word. Welding gloves. Uh, that's going to not let you have enough momentum and flexibility with handling the toke, and it's just going to dart right out of the enclosure. Alrighty, so with all that said, let's get in here. Um, all right, so we got him right here. Can you see him? Mm -hmm. You can get the shot. Okay, so uh, pretty much what I'm going to do is with these guys, I just quickly grab them, uh, put them up to my chest, and then raise them up high. I feel like when you raise them up high, it works a little better. I've seen it work very well with some arboreal snakes and monitors where they feel a little more secure up there just from being arboreal, I imagine, and being up high enough to make it to where he's not going to have any sort of escape where he can jump onto a different ledge and run off. You really don't want to miss when you try this. That's the big thing. Uh, I've missed a couple of times when trying to get them and they run out and then it's a half hour of hell of me trying to chase around this toke gecko that can climb walls, ceilings, underneath stuff. It's a pain. So make sure when you go for your shot, you get them the first time. So the best thing to do is try to scoop them upwards. Oh my god. All right, so uh, he got out. <laughs> so we just had to chase him a while. Now I'm just lifting him up in the air, trying to make him feel a little more um, secure. He might be a little more grumpy because we did just, or I did just hold him for a video clip that I did for Professor Herb for something he was doing. So this is day number two in a row of handling him. So he's probably a little more stressed out uh, than he normally would. And he's acting out a little more than he usually does. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I lift him in the air for a couple of seconds, making him feel a little more secure. And then, um, I just kind of chill out now. Uh, they get a little better as they calm down and realize that you're, you're not a threat. You're kind of just going to stay motionless. Um, it can differ from gecko to gecko. I've seen geckos charge out and dart away after this. This guy's usually pretty good and he just kind of stays where he's at and kind of defends his turf, which just happens to me in my gloved hand, which works out for me. Um, but yeah, yeah. And there you have it, not that bad. That's pretty much it. Got some nice thumbnail pictures right there, so we're gonna be putting him back now. Uh, just one quick thing, if you do notice that your gecko gets a little more feisty, you know, you want to really control him, stabilize him a little bit, um, I always make sure that my thumb is free, and then you can just gently pinch down on his neck with his uh, with your index finger up near his shoulders. He kind of has his hand in the way, so it wouldn't work very well. But having this hand placed right here uh, makes it to where he's pretty much immobile, so you can still kind of, you know, touch him, things like that, and he's not going to be able to move, bite back, and bite you. Um, not really necessarily good to do. Um, not don't like it that much, but if you're just doing those situations that I talked about beforehand, where it's like, you know, moving him from one enclosure to the next, uh, you can just safely grab him real quick, pin him with that method, and then put him in the enclosure, and then it's all good, said, and done. <laughs> but all right, we're going to put him in his enclosure now, and then next up, we'll be talking about handling a captive bred smaller animal. Hey guys, I'm actually going to cut the video short and end it right here instead of moving on with the sub-adult handling. Uh, the more I thought about it, the more I figured it would actually be better to uh, make a, actually a whole nother video, you know, going more into in-depth on you, toke behavior, um, trust gaining, uh, things like that. And I'm about to actually move all these guys. I said actually three times now, Jesus Christ, but I'll be moving these guys very shortly into this, well, unorthodox idea that I have that of course it will be showing on the channel uh, it should arrive here in the beginning of May so probably a couple weeks from now I'll be showing it off and then I'll be making that video there talking uh, more about like I said the uh, more of the behavioral side understanding toke body language and then trust gaining with them all in all, I feel like we got the basics down there, you know, we handle some tokes. Um, pretty funny that, you know, I was like, get it on your first shot, you don't want the toke to get out, and then I did not get it on my first shot, and the toke ran away, and it took us <laughs> about 15 minutes to catch him before uh, we actually got him out into the, more into the uh, video. <laughs>
But yeah, if you are interested in that, make sure to keep watching the channel. Like I said, it should be a few weeks, then I'll dive more into that with a new video. And then, so there's actually, there's a couple more Toke content uh, ideas that I have in videos that will be coming uh, pretty shortly to the channel. But other than that, as always, if you like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at DBCB Exotics. Other than that, of course, we have the Herp Hour. The Herp Hour is... <laughs> I said it funny. <laughs> the Herp Hour is a podcast I do with myself and of course Professor Herp. Uh, we stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Really good stuff. Uh, the next video, I believe, if this comes out before Saturday, will be with Scales13. Scales13 is a YouTuber on here, a small channel like myself and Professor Herp. So it'll be pretty interesting talking to him. I think we'll be talking about uh, just some Aki stuff, things like that. It'll be very cool to see. So uh, make sure you check out the uh, stream at that time. That's going to be the end of the video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.